Keith Abloh is a medical correspondent for Fox News. God help the people he actually treats, if he treats anyone at all. Uh, he's a psychiatrist, so he plays with their minds. Oh my God, <laughs> please get him away from patients. Uh, but Fox News says, no, 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 it's okay. He's on the medical A team. I fear to see what's on their B team, uh, partly because of an op-ed that he's got out now. I mean, he's said many, many crazy things in the past, of which we've reported to you uh, before. But this time, he decided to take up the issue of the Holocaust. Now, God help us all. Um, now, he wanted to defend Ben Carson. Uh, ben Carson said if they had had uh, more guns, uh, the Jews could have fought back and they could have, uh, you know, beaten the Nazis. It's a preposterous claim. First of all, uh, as we've explained earlier on the show, in fact, there was very tight gun regulation that the Nazis loosened. They were actually for gun rights, the Nazis were. And they didn't want the Jews to have the guns, uh, of course, because they were about to kill them all. Uh, but uh, would the guns have made any difference? Given that the Nazis took over half of Europe in about three days and destroyed every army in their path until an enormous war finally with the Great Britain, U the United States, and the Soviet Union combined barely beat them, I don't think a couple of guns would have done the trick. In fact, even Keith Ablo admits in his op-ed, well, Carson might not have been right about that. A couple more guns might not have made the difference. Are you not merciful? But then he goes on to gratuitously insult the victims of the Holocaust anyway. So he says, the mindset that Jews surrendered with their guns is far more important than the hardware they turned over. They surrendered uh, the demonstrated intention at all costs to re resist being deprived of liberty. Now, we're going to needlessly break this down. At the moment that the Nazi authorities show up, I know Keith Ablow thinks he's a super tough guy. He'd have mowed them all down and he'd have been a hero and he'd have single handedly defeated the entire Nazi party in Germany. Of course, of course. More likely, not only would he have surrendered, but he might have been like, oh, hey, good thing you guys are here. I was looking forward to seeing you guys. But let's leave aside that speculation. At the time that a lot of the Jews were being rounded up, they didn't know they were going to be sent to camps and killed, right? So there's a whole people show, a set of people show up with an army, right? With the scariest army in the history of the world, the Nazis show up at their doorstep. And Ablo says, oh, they should have known. They should have known. They should have immediately started firing at them and being as heroic as I would have been. Oh, my God. I, it's hard to find anything more offensive. <laughs> All right. And it's, he's not anywhere near done. He says, if Jews in Germany had more actively resisted the Nazi party or the Nazi regime and had diagnosed it as a malignant and deadly cancer from the start, there would indeed have been a chance for the people of that country and the world to be moved to action by their bold refusal to be enslaved. He's literally blaming the victims of the Holocaust. You should have resisted more. You should have taken bold action. And if you had taken bold action, maybe your couple of guns wouldn't have made a difference. But it would have emboldened the rest of the world to fight against the Nazis. What are you talking about? First of all, a lot of Jews did resist. And in the Warsaw ghettos, when they resisted and shot about 50 Nazis, that was great. And then the Nazis turned around and murdered 13,000 Jews on the spot. And did that mobilize the rest of the world? No. When Jews went to all the different parts of the world, including the United States, they were all told, no, we're not going to take you in. Not in every country, but in a lot of countries. Those countries were not emboldened because the Jews fought back. And they were not, not emboldened because the Jews didn't fight back. They didn't want the Jews. Okay? So that is horrific. That thing happened. And then you want to say, oh, well, it's their fault. If they'd fought, fought back more, then we'd opened our doors to them. And the, then the Nazis would have been scared. And then this would have happened and that would have happened. I mean, if you don't fight back against the Nazis, I mean, and then you get a Holocaust. That's what happens. Right? That's what he's saying here. One more. Now, at this point, the Anti-Defamation League already said about Ben Carson, don't do that, don't do that, don't blame the victims. That's horrific, please don't attack the people who died in the Holocaust. <laughs> but get a load of this. Ablo thinks that Ben Carson knows better than the head of the Anti-Defamation League about the Holocaust. So he says, to me, the National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, seems to have forgotten these iconic words, never again. Thank God that men like Ben Carson remind us of them. The head of the Anti-Defamation League needed Ben Carson to remind him about the horrors of the Holocaust.